this for you today. As you notice, we're not in the studio. We decided that we would inter we would introduce you to our uh, guests first. Uh, they were having a little trouble with the stairs. So uh, first I want to introduce you to Darlene Supnick. Darlene is the founder of Forgotten Angels Equine Rescue. And as I mentioned, we're going to introduce you to some of the uh, guests that we have with us and let Darlene tell you a little bit about them. And then we'll be uh, heading back into the studio so that we can uh, do a little bit more conversation and talk a little bit more about how this all came about. So Darlene, would you take some time, grab the mic, and introduce our friends? Sure. Um, we did try to teach the horses to go up the steps, but they just didn't want to cooperate. We have with us, we have Dr. Veronica Lai McElroy. I said that correctly for a change. Nate Supnick, and we also have Lori Huggins, and they all help us. And Dr. Um, Veronica is a veterinarian, and uh, we were having a problem getting our truck started. So everybody came together and helped us to get the little minis, we call them the minions, over here. But I wanted to just say one thing. We save all sizes of horses, which we'll talk about inside, from draft horses to race horses. These are the tiniest ones, and all our horses are saved from slaughter. Oh, you, we forgot their names. This is little Stanley. And this is Angel. They are the smallest residents at our rescue. And actually, they get along with even the 17-hand uh, draft horses. This one's a bully, actually. She, she picks on all the big ones. So any good stories about them, things they've done where they've gotten themselves in trouble and surprised you? Well, this one, we were at a function, and she decided to um, photobomb the mummers. So they actually were walking along with her, with them. She refused to leave. She loved the music, you know. And then th this is a medicine hat. And years ago, she has a blue eye. The Indians used to steal medicine hats from each tribe because they're supposed to be so spiritual and they're really, really rare. And this is little Stanley. He was in a feedlot, which I'll tell you what that is a little later, but he was scheduled for slaughter. They do slaughter these minis, and they sent them to foreign countries, and they feed lions with, they feed them to lions, and, you know, they do other things with them, like they rope them, like we rope calves up here. So this one was definitely saved from slaughter. This one almost went to uh, an auction where kill buyers attend. Now, how old are these two guys? This one is four, and this one just turned three. This one actually had papers, and we uh, we found her papers. Life expectancy on a horse? Uh, you don't want to know. We've had we've found horses that were 40 years old, and minis they can be 35, 37 years old. They live for a long time. So when you get a horse, you have to plan on a long term with them, just like with a dog. You should think of them for life. Well, either that or like a parrot. Parrots, yeah. when you do parrot rescue, they can live 40, 50 years, and you'd better have them in your will and who's going there to go to. So do you have a planning set for each of these guys in case they... Well, well, we have a rescue, and we have people on the board, and if anything happens to me, I'm hoping that with wonderful people like these, the rescue will continue forever. Yep. Now, what type of places will you take them to? Do they do therapy work, things like that as well? We have a therapy mini, um, and we do have some children who come over and use, you know, they work with it. We're trying to start a therapy program. In fact, when we go in, we'll talk about it. Lori wants to um, help us start a therapy program. We did work with some soldiers, and we had them over. They, they learned how to do, they had all the veterinarians came over to our property. They came in 40 Humvees dressed in their outfit from Fort Dix, and they learned how to work on the horses before they deployed. So we do a lot of things, but you we... You gave them shovels so they could muck. No, no. Oh. They, they actually had they had live role players. It's pre-STD. Yeah. Um, really? Wow, yeah, pre-STD. Awesome. But um, the minis are really great. Everybody loves the minis. But actually, the minis are bad compared to the big horses these what these little minis will turn around and bite you if you don't give them attention where the big horses they won't do that interesting now you brought pictures as well as oh, some of yes. the bigger horses yes. I, I got to see them they're absolutely gorgeous animals it's hard to believe anybody could eat something like that well it blows my mind you know most of the horses that go to slaughter and 177,000 were slaughtered last year they go to canada and they go to mexico they kill them they send them to countries like japan france italy 
Most of them are healthy and young. People say, oh, they're old, they're sick. No, they want young, healthy horses. And you know, you hear so much about the racehorses are being saved. Well, guess what? More quarter horses and more racehorses go to slaughter. It, it's just, it's very sad. And people don't realize what's going on as well as, and I bet you didn't know this either, our American wild horses, our icon of this country, they're rounding them up and they're killing our wild horses. At our taxpayer dollars, the Bureau of Land Management is rounding them up, putting them in holding pens, and then they're selling them to slaughter. It's just people need to get aware of this and what's happening to our horses. Well, it's amazing. We'll have to talk about that offline, too, because uh, we, just, we had interviewed a young lady who does work with elephants and oh. saving elephants. New Jersey is, the le is probably the leading state mm -hmm. for passing ordinances against ivory sales. Mm -hmm and things like that. It's a total ban in the state of New Jersey. I know. So maybe we can get some of our senators, like Senator Lesniak, mm -hmm. who's a big animal advocate, we'll get him on board and see what we can do to help mm -hmm. with, the, oh, with the horses. He's, he's wonderful, and Don Adiego is a really good, you know, New Jersey is one of the best animal-friendly states. And, and the horses, by the way, are state our state animal is a horse. I never knew that. I never <laughs> I knew, knew that. I teach you something today. Oh, I'll learn a lot today. <laughs> so we're in pretty good shape. We're going to take a quick break and go inside. The horses look like they're ready to uh, trot home. off into the sunset. And we'll see you folks in a few minutes. This is Pet Patrol, protector of the pack. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. This is Alan Brassler, your host. And uh, I'm with our guests. We are missing the four-legged friends. They decided to take a break. But I have with me Darlene Supnik. Darlene is the founder and director, I guess, mm -hmm. for yes, I Forgotten Angels Equine Rescue. Uh, I'd introduce her to Nate, her husband. He's with the horses. 
He always gets left with that job. He's mucking. Yeah, he, he, gets, the, he, he gets, the gets the clean, clean up, up job after all the time. we got done. And I also have with me uh, Lori Huggins, who's right here. They, you're, the ladies moved around, so I had to keep my my keep focused. Uh, Lori is going to be doing publicity for the rescue, and she's a volunteer. And I have someone who introduced us all together, Gabriella McAllister. Gabby uh, was on a show a while back. Uh, very talented woman who is able to communicate better than anybody I've ever seen with the animals. They actually under she understands what they're saying. And I watched it in practice. It was absolutely fantastic. It was fascinating. So I have, I'm going to get back to a question for you. Okay. How did you get started in equine rescue okay. and why? All right. Years ago, I showed Arabian horses, and we we were kind of considered a backyard breeder. We bred a few horses, and it was really funny because one of them went all the way to the United States Nationals and won top horse in the country. Well, all of a sudden, I realized we can't breed horses because horses are getting slaughtered. I didn't know this, and so many people in this horse field, they have no clue what's happening. And I think I mentioned that 177,000 horses last year shipped to slaughter, and they're beautiful. They're show horses and wild horses and everything from race horses and even mini horses, draft horses. So I decided four years ago, actually, that I was going to start saving them instead of showing them. And I started with one or two, and now we have saved 109 horses so far. And they all were from kill pens and slaughter buyers. They're the ones who you have to go in and compete for the price because they sell them for meat. And it's pretty expensive. So you actually have to either pay the kill buyer or you have to pay as much as he wants at an auction for the horses. So it's been really, really successful for us. We found wonderful homes for so many of the horses. Some of them have gone on to be show horses again. And it's just, it's a thing from your heart that if you have this passion that you want to save them. And we also have a lot of people coming to the rescue who someone has terminal cancer. So, and they just come and they say it's so therapeutic. Another girl has leukemia. So I'm thinking we want to take the rescue horses to help the people. So my mission is basically save the horses and help the people. Now you were saying we talked earlier that uh, there's a misconception that it's not old horses who are on their last legs mm -hmm. that are being slaughtered. Right, they want healthy, young, fat. I want to say that most of the horses, wouldn't you say, Gabrielle, are under eight years old? Absolutely. And they're very healthy. And w we have one in particular I want to talk about. And Gabriella saved this horse, basically, and Lori is in love with it. A lot of the racehorses, in my and how opinion. Did she save him? Yes, yes. In my opinion, and they're going to they're going to be mad at me for saying this the thoroughbred racehorses they train them too soon they they even run them and race them at 2 years old their knees are not even completely formed by then now the the standard breds you know with the carts they train them later but i took one horse that it was we we tracked down the breeder and i won't mention who it is but we took a horse that apparently had been trained too roughly and was pretty much totally crippled. She was ready to go on the slaughter truck. And I, somebody had posted, I can't stand this, all these beautiful racehorses, this one's only two years old. And they posted it, it was another rescue on Facebook. So I said, okay, we'll take her. Well, this horse couldn't barely walk. I mean, it was so sad. So I had met Gabriella quite by accident, and I invited her, actually Sharon and I invited you to come over. and. Um, Tell them what you did, because now, right after she was finished, the horse actually picked her back foot up and scratched her ear before she couldn't even stand on all four feet. What did she do? Um, well, the therapy I do is called connected energy therapy. So I work on the energetic level, the emotional source of disease, and then the physical. So the first time meeting Kiss, it was basically doing medical intuition, <coughs> finding out what was going on with her on a physical level looking at where she was emotionally at. You know, a lot of horses, especially when they're on the slaughter line, they absolutely know what's going to happen. They all talk to each other, they know it's bad, you know, they smell the fear, they hear people talking, they've proven it now that animals have human language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, National Geographic 2007 article came out, Animal Minds. They just did, uh, it was on CNN, 
They were scanning the brains of dogs, showing and proving that they had human language and that they understand. So all species really do have quite a bit. So these animals are very sentient to where they're headed. So when Kiss arrived at the rescue, it, it's like somebody who's been through a Nazi concentration camp. Totally traumatized. You don't mm -hmm. feel safe. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're telling you you're safe, but you've been in an abuse pattern for so long that they can't wrap their heads around mm -hmm. it. So we had to get Kiss to a point subconsciously and consciously that she's there to stay and that she can relax so that the body can then start to heal. She had also had, um, which this wasn't a uh, woo-woo, uh, but <laughs> Darlene had let me know that she had had a pelvic injury, probably from having been flipped over during training. And so that's why she was so crippled in her back end. So as we worked on her, I can do energy work that literally takes over chiropractic and acupuncture. It can change the structure of the body without pain. In rescue animals, this is even more important because here they don't trust humanity and mm -hmm. someone's going to start touching them. Right. And they're like, don't touch me. Again, creating stress, resistance to healing. So my work is hands off and they saw the whole back end of her, her body start to lift up the pelvis, the back legs straightened out a bit. She actually stretched out through the ribs and she was able to stand in a balanced way by the time we were done to the point where she was able to do tight turns mm -hmm. in the stall and yeah. not threaten to fall over. And then she reached up with her back leg to scratch and everybody's just staring on her. Yeah, she couldn't, couldn't do that it. this morning. She couldn't stand on all four feet. So that's and that's not even the kiss I know. Because I the know. kiss I know is venturing out. She's now tell us about how you see her. her. Because, well, I m must have met her a month or so. You've only had her for several months. Yes. So it must have been a month or after so of Gabrielle's work. Would you liken your work to like Reiki on people? It's, chakra work? It's a little beyond that. Connected energy therapy, which I trademark, is connected. So it's connected to the energetic, the emotional, and the physical. So it takes it to another level beyond Reiki and beyond Qigong. Okay. So the, and it's different frequencies as well. So when I met her, I was so thrilled to be out at the rescue. And, you know, I thank God for Darlene. Um, I was, you know, grooming Kiss. And I was like wondering, why is the hair coming off so mm -hmm. easily? And Darlene's like, you don't even know where this dog, dog where this horse was a month ago. Mm -hmm. So you have done genius work. And she's my bestie now. So. I know. She's so sweet. She's now, so sweet. she's what we call a sanctuary horse. Some horses come, and we plan to keep them for life. We have a blind Arabian horse, <laughs> totally blind. And she has a seeing eye donkey. I know that sounds funny, but she really yeah. has her own seeing eye donkey named Jenny. Jenny so it's Glory <laughs> and Jenny. And then we, we took in a 30-year-old donkey that couldn't stand up. All the veterinarians said, she has to be put to sleep. I said, no, she doesn't. I will not take that for an answer. And that was we had fancy, physically right? physically... Yeah, we had to physically pick this donkey up by the tail. Now, she was a mini donkey. We had to pick her up by the tail to stand her up every day. She lay down. Now, she is Feisty. a person. She runs around. She follows people. She runs loose on the property. You call her. Her name's Dunkin' Donut, but they call her Shrekie because she, like she looks like the donut, right? She looks like, like the, the donkey in Shrekie. She um, literally follows you around so like your house dog. One. But we've had so many horses come to us where... You couldn't even touch them. The, the little halflinger, when you would touch her, you would put your hand on her and she would literally fall to the ground. Here she was an Amish driving horse and there's so many of them. Well, they said she wasn't large enough to carry their family of eight. So they bring her to the auction, trade her in like a used car and drive out with another horse. So most of them we get have been either abused or traumatized, even if just from being in the auction. We have one horse that actually fell off a slaughter truck. There was no room. They were try they tried to load too many. She actually fell off, so they said, no, you can't bring her in. We had another one that was just ready to enter, and there was no room for this one, but she didn't fall off. Um, her name is Nellie, and one of the girls said, this horse is in foal. She's a gigantic draft horse, black and white, gorgeous She's horse. gorgeous. She had and a baby in foal means she was about to have a baby. Yeah, four, four months. Four weeks later, she had a foal. And they also lie and say, oh, we don't send pregnant mares. They do. And some of them have their babies right in the truck. And, and the baby drive. is yeah, they, beautiful. Our baby's beautiful And he's now. thriving. He's boomer. And he's boomer. And he's really tall now. And he's just thriving so much in your carrots. 
Now you were saying that you have to you have to bid against the folks who buy them for slaughter. Mm -hmm. Give the folks an idea of what type of expenses involved to rescue a horse. Again, because I'm sure you would take donations. We do. And Not, we don't get that many. Right. We get them when there's a story. Like, we saved 33 racehorses in Shemong through the SPCA all at one time. Then it was on Action News and everything. Then people want to donate, but then they forget about the expense after. So I'll give you a simple example. If you're going to buy it from the kill buyer, see, sometimes they get them, and then you have to buy them from the kill buyer. They're at least $700 and $800 because... They inflate the price, even though I think meat would bring like 500, wouldn't you think? So let's say you pay. It's like a cattle auction. Right. Let's say you pay 700 for the horse. Now you have to put the horse in quarantine at least four weeks. So you have to pay for quarantine. So say that's another $400 to 800. So now you're up to 900 around. Then you have to get the teeth done. You have to get the feet done. You have to get all the shots. The shots are about $125. Now, this is from an auction because they're usually not healthy or sick. If you have your own horse, it's not as expensive as this because we're taking horses that were abused, they were sick. Some of them have to be trained. So it, I want to say the minimum to save a horse is $1,200 once you get it off the feet. Yeah. Well, we're going to come back. We're going to take a quick commercial break and then com come back. I'm curious to talk about how many horses you have, what it takes to take care of them, where you can use volunteers. That's great. We always need, you want to come and volunteer? I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> Nate would like someone else to muck. We're going to have we'll you come. We'll explain mucking later. I do that on, <laughs> on vacations. So, uh, again, this is uh, Pet Patrol, Protector of the Pack. We'll be back in a few minutes after this commercial. Today's show is sponsored by Hargrove Demolition, your demolition experts. Hargrove is a family-owned and operated business right here in the southern New Jersey area, bringing you 45 years of demolition expertise. Hargrove has all your demolition needs, from emergency demolition service to demolition equipment rental. Hargrove is one of the state-approved recycling facilities right here in the southern New Jersey area. No job is too big or too small for Hargrove Demolition. Contact them today at one of their three locations. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made. 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and training rooms. Extra Innings can provide professional instruction, private and group lessons, and the best year-round clinics. Along with a nationally recognized pro shop that features the latest and widest selection of equipment and apparel, our experienced staff can provide you with the right instruction and help you find the best equipment for your ability and budget. Extra Innings, where the game never ends. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Hi, welcome back. This is Pet Patrol, Protector of the Pack. I'm Alan Bradford, your host. And again, I'm here with Darling Supnick and Lori Huggins and Gabriella McAllister. 
That's pretty good for an old guy remembering everybody's names, right? That was you good. Like that? <laughs> so here's what we want to do next. We'd like to show you some pictures of some of the horses that uh, Darlene and her folks take care of, tell you a little bit about them, and then when she's done, we're going to tell you how you can help out by sponsoring one of these horses, almost like an adoption plan, but you don't have to take it home. So uh, should we see? Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, this is a Tennessee Walking Horse Cross, and she's mixed with Quarter Horse, and she was the one, she's the one that actually the fell thing. off oh. the trailer. And what's her name? Um, this is Jazzy. We call her Jazzy. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. She's beautiful. Anyone could ride this horse. We can't even imagine how horses like these, you know, ship to slaughter. She looks like a Palomino. She is. She's, she's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. chest, light chestnut like dirty blonde and then a blonde mane and tail. Mm -hmm. Like Trigger. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is when we had the military from Fort Dix. It was pretty exciting. They came in 40 Humvees. They had live role players and they were veterinarians from all over the country learning how to work on large animals because some of them were small animal vets and they were ready to deploy to Afghanistan. So they had our local vet, which was Dr. Platt, showing them, you know, where do you give the shots and what do you do? So that was really a fun day. And we got to meet everybody, even a general came. That is a horse we pulled. And believe it or not, that is my granddaughter on her. This horse was a third level dressage horse in a kill pen. They're very rare. They're. Um, beautiful warm blood horse and now another little girl has her and she's a state champion I believe in Pennsylvania because we do adopt some out okay that's one of the mini horses that we have and that <laughs> is little Ian Ian is on the horse and Ian's mother was the one who helped found this her name is Lisa Draharad and I want to put a little plug for Ian he's in all kinds of TV commercials now <laughs> And the horse's name just, is what? This is Snowflake, and Ian is just the juicy, juicy juice boy now on the juicy juice box. Huh. But that's Snowflake if you'd like to. Announce. Now this is the little medicine hat that was out there, and that's her with her little winter coat on in an indoor riding arena next door. And she's got beautiful blue eyes. Yeah. So this so is cute. the one that Native Americans thought yes. had so much energy, so mm -hmm. you, you just steal them from other tribes or Native Americans to bring the energy into their own. That's the baby. Nellie is the one we told you, the big draft horse that had a baby four weeks later, and that's him when he was born. That's Boomer. That's another <laughs> mini. Looks like a unicorn. Well, we did. We dressed her up. <laughs> oh, no, it is a unicorn. It is a unicorn. A little girl wanted a birthday party, and a friend of mine brought her over, and we dressed her up and put bows in a unicorn, and she took pictures with her, and she really, to this day, thinks she saw a real unicorn. It's really cute. I love to make the kids happy, too. Oh, that's her again. She's hogging the, the pictures up here. What is this? Okay, that's, um, that's one of the things I do put out is I am a horse, not a burger. And that is a horse that was blind in one eye, and no one wanted her, and she showed up at Cranberry Auction, and now she's just a sweetheart. She's a sanctuary horse because she came back two times because being blind in one eye, every once in a while, if somebody comes up on her blind eye, she'll swing her head and hit them in the and head. They think, and they think she's so, aggressive. Yeah, and she's not. not. And so what's her name? That This is Sandy. So Sandy, Sandy is with you all the time. Mm -hmm. She's living on the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about burgers, where she would she would have ended up in Canada or Mexico being killed, and then they shipped them to Japan, Italy, uh, France, and so many countries eat them. And this is the worst part. I have to tell you, they are not. It's not healthy. We give them so many toxic chemicals like butte and wormer that is really that's why we don't eat them in this country. Gabriella, you can talk about that. The, the, yeah, the different um, things we give them. There was a um, a wonderful man that um, he's actually in the UK now, but he lived in the United States for a long time. His name is Alex Brown, and if you go to alexbrownracing.com, he is a premier horse expert. He did a book on Barbaro, that amazing mm -hmm. horse. Um, exactly. He also did a documentary on horse slaughter. Now, Alex Brown is an MBA Wharton Business School. This is a very intelligent man. He did a documentary on horse slaughter from the perspective of education. There are no graphic photos. 
he gives you all the educational perspective, the different segments that the horses come from, and why and how horse slaughter can be stopped, exactly what Darlene was saying. There's one particular drug, Butte, for example, mm -hmm. which is a pain, a pain reducing drug. It's a painkiller and also anti-inflammatory. It is carcinogenic mm -hmm. for human consumption. And they all and get he, it. And he detail, every horse in North America yeah, gets butte gets at butte. one point or another, mm -hmm. and it stays in their system. So we are, an animal that is a service animal, if you will, for sport, uh, for riding, for therapy. whatever, therapy, then instead of being this sport animal, it blurs the line going into the food chain. Mm -hmm. And there's no regulation around what they're fed in order for what's actually okay for human consumption, like butte being a carcinogenic. So that's why we don't eat them in this country, but we're sending them abroad and it's poisoning people. So and you know what the worst part is that in certain countries, they really believe, they're superstitious, they believe that pregnant women and infants should eat horse meat, you know, young babies when they're starting. But that's the worst type of, um, you know, person that would be eating this carcinogenic. So we're busy exporting poison to we other are. countries. Poisonous we are, food yeah. to other countries. Right. And if you go to alexbrownracing.com. And they know it though, but they yeah. don't do anything about it. Right. No. And, and that's the thing. It's like the general public has to really inform itself. So. If people go to alexbrownracing.com, the documentary is right on there. It's a three segment on YouTube that anybody can watch. And because it's nonviolent and it's non graphic, people can actually hear the message of why slaughter can end and why it should end. Well, let's talk about a little bit too about the sponsorship of the ponies and also some of your thoughts we'll get to on passing legislation. Okay. Uh, New Jersey is a very progressive state, we tend to protect animals. Uh, we were talking about sponsoring a pony or, or a horse that's living at the rescue mm -hmm. and uh, give folks an idea of what it costs a month just for one horse Okay. and what's involved. Um, we also adopt horses out, but the sanctuary horses, I, I want to say that it's at least $100 a week to feed the horse because these horses need supplements and, you know, Maybe 75, it's about 75 a week to feed each horse. And I'm counting. Or donkey. Or donkeys, we have a few of those too. <laughs> but um, what, what we wanted to do was the horses here, we'd like to sponsor them where people could sponsor a horse, come and visit the horse, play with the horse, if they're rideable, her. ride the horse, take pictures. And we were thinking $200 a month for a horse and maybe a hundred dollars a month for a mini. We're just going to start this because we really do need, in order to save more horses, we need to get donations in to cover the ones we already and have. And that's and not a lot of money when you think about it because I know friends who have horses and the upkeep and the vet bills, I mean, you're, you're just touching the surface mm -hmm. on what the costs right, are. Because right, because when I worked on KISS and did the medical intuition of what she needed, mm -hmm. though the supplements very easily that that horse needs is well over 500 a month. Mm -hmm. Just the supplements, not the feed. And so what happens at rescues is they get good quality hay, good quality food, they get good quality care, but then the extras that they need to rebuild their digestive systems, their immune systems, they don't have any extra for that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what we need to do, because we're, we're almost out of time. What I'd like you to do is, and very clearly and distinctly, as we all know, because we, have to, we want people here, the name of the organization again, mm -hmm. how they can contact you, Let's okay. Start with that. Well, we're right in Medford. We're like five minutes from here. Two eight eight Hartford Road, and that's Medford. We're between. If you're local, between Johnson's Corner and Lenape High School. We're Phone on the number opposite. Phone number is six zero nine eight two zero six three seven seven. And as it says, we are forgotten angels equine rescue but once they get here they're forgotten no more and you have a website or <laughs> yes, a Facebook we do. Site. same thing same thing we have both and the website is the same name dot com okay and uh, an email address if someone wants to email it's my name D Supnik at AOL dot com or forgotten angels equine rescue at gmail dot com okay and you're located again in Medford. Yes, and so people you're not that all they far have to from do, where we are here yeah, in Mount Laurel. Three, it took five minutes to get here. And I come from Center City, and everybody wants to think that's the end of the world, and no. it's not. And especially when you're going for something that's so worthwhile 
and the horses give you so much back. And we need volunteers too. Definitely need volunteers, especially if we could get some horse trainers to come in and help us with some of the more difficult horses. We've only been doing this for three years. And as I said, we saved 109 horses. Most of them are adopted. We have 15 right now there and a few in foster care because the 33 racehorses were kind of hard so to So how many horses again do you have Right now we have premise? 15 on the premises. Because right. I have 30 acres, you're only allowed 15. One, five per, per lot, so we have 15. And um, we have others in foster care. That's another thing, we are looking for some foster homes. We have a few in Salem County. And in a foster home, they will feed the horse and take care of it, but we're responsible for the vet Please bills don't the tell barrier. my wife you're looking for someone to foster oh, horses. Oh, do you want a mini we, horse? We have, we, so our, our, our house is an extension of uh, Noah's Ark. three rescues. Yes, we are so Noah's Ark. Wait, Ark. I have nine foster dogs that are rescues. Good for you. And numerous cats. It's a good thing my house is pretty And pink. minis do very well with dogs. Yes. Oh, just... But donkeys And they fit in the house. Do yes, they like what pools? A, what kind yes. of lot oh, do you really? have to have to have Yeah, how much space minis? would someone need Well, in Medford area, in this area, you really only need an acre. Want one, Keith? <laughs> and does everybody have to be um, zoned for horses? Most areas in New Jersey, you really one acre. Most of them, like Medford, Marlton, uh, Mount Laurel, their zoning is pretty good. But you know, you need a you need something to um, house them, like a well, shelter, like a little shed. Or all the Medford folks who have their mini farms who are mm -hmm. looking for the tax oh, yeah. write off. Call us. Instead mini of horse. It, get a mini <laughs> horse and replace a chicken with a horse. Talk or about a chicken. Dane. Wait, I have to just tell you, there is a beautiful nursery called Stellwags, and they're going out of business. So we went over and we agreed to take their old, old donkey, which we took the old, old donkey. Then we took a crippled goat from another place, and now we have a rooster. We need a home for a rooster. If anybody, what, his name is Mr. Red Rooster, and he and was a pet. And he's beautiful. He's so cute. He's so we, we save everything, dogs, cats, horses. But go to the website, horses. because her Facebook page and her website really do give you pictures and history and background of all of these guys. One more time on how they can con on the website and how they can contact you. It's uh, www.forgottenangelsequinerescue.com and um, that's, we have our Facebook page and it's the same thing only it's Gmail for the horse rescue email. And the address again is 288 Hartford Road, Medford, New Jersey. And you're all welcome to come over. We'll give you a pitchfork. We'll teach you how to <laughs> groom. We'll teach you how to muck. Do you know what that is? You know what, you, I, I hope everyone knows what mucking is. Mucking is cleaning up after the horses. And you know what? It's not that bad because they only eat hay. It's the poop patrol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a little bit bigger than the poop bag you need. Yeah. They're dog. actually called barn yeah. animals. Yeah. So <laughs> it just makes it a little bit more palatable. Right. Yes, but yeah, we yeah. always need volunteers. We really need volunteers. Okay. And this is why I want to thank you so much. This was really fun. I enjoyed doing this a lot and get the word out and maybe we can even get some horses adopted and get some fosters too. Well, I want to thank you ladies for being here. This is I, I love this. This is my break during the day. This is always a lot of fun. Oh, you're so much fun. You're so yeah. easy to talk to. Oh, 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 tell my wife that, please. <laughs> tell them I listen, we too. I actually do listen. Oh, right, right, right. uh, yeah. They, they had a blast. Well, I know that uh, I think Sarah wants to. She'll be over with the kids. Good. So, oh, good. But thanks, folks. Uh, again, this is Pet Patrol, Protector of the Pack. I hope that you enjoyed this segment. Uh, please support this. It's Learn a little bit more about what happens with the horses. It's it's interesting, the, the stereotypes that we've had over the years that we think it's old horses, they're about ready to die, and they go to slaughter. Uh, you're talking young, healthy animals that are just uh, folks who are greedy, who don't care. Uh, we also should be talking about with our state senators and our state assembly people because New Jersey is a very progressive state. Well, it is a no horse slaughter state. How can we how can we expand that effort as well? Uh, New Jersey seems to be the conscience of our country. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to keep it up. Again, Pet Patrol, protectors of the pack, I thank you very much and we will see you next time. <laughs>